it's using this concept to come up with infinite ideas. And for this to work, there are three simple steps. The first is, so as I'm going through this course by Dicke Bush, he speaks about the two-year test when it comes to content creation. And I found it very interesting and thought that I would make a video about it. The idea is that many people have these two lingering thoughts in their head. The first is, I don't know what to write about. And the second is, I'm not qualified to write about this thing. And in a way, this is a big problem because it doesn't allow you to create content that you resonate with or actually not create content at all, which both suck. So what is the solution? And here comes the two-year test. So there are three questions that you need to ask yourself in this two-year test. The first is, what questions did you have two years ago that you now have answers to? In a previous video, I spoke about what I would do if I were to start freelancing over again. Accidentally, I started it roughly two years ago. So if I had to think about this myself, what questions do I now have the answers to that I didn't know back then? Maybe things about finding clients, things about portfolio, things about finances. These are all things that I had a lot of questions about that took me time in order to get the right answer. So that's the first question. What questions do you have the answers to now that you didn't have two years ago? The second question is, what experiences have you gained over the last two years? In terms of freelance copywriting and freelance content writing, for me, I feel I've gained a lot of experiences in time management, dealing with clients, work-life balance through trial and error. But they're all things that you think you have the answer to, in a way, but life teaches you otherwise. There is that back and forth, testing things out, figuring out what doesn't work and what works, doing less of one and more of the other. So that's the second question. What life experiences have you gained over the last two years? And the third question is, how has your life position changed over the last two years? And this is quite a big question when it comes to life position. So it all depends on you, your situation, personally and professionally. For me, I feel that I've become a much more confident person. A few years ago, I never thought I would be in front of a camera and recording videos. It's something that just didn't feel like me. But it's something I can do okay now, and it will only get better the more I do it. So how has your life position changed over the last two years? That is the third question. And when you can answer these three questions, you realize that you are an expert. You know more than the people that are in your position that wanted to take that next step. You realize that you know more than 95% of your industry because of your experiences, life lessons, and questions that you have answered. So you, by answering these two questions, realize that you are an expert in what you do. And once you realize this, logically the next step is that you can write or you can create content to a particular audience that can find your stuff really valuable. And this is the kind of breakthrough idea that really got me thinking. When people have this idea that they need to write to a broad audience, that they need to appeal to everyone. But in reality, the world is a big place. Even if you appeal and you write with one person in mind, there's a lot of people that can identify with that person. And by using your experiences, your life lessons, your answers, you can really dial in and create content aimed at that person. Which, another great thing about that, is that it also excludes the other people that you're not writing to. After all, by trying to please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. So by being super dialed in, and using the three questions that I mentioned before, you can really create content and writing and videos and podcasts and whatever type of content you're creating that really appeals and provides value. The idea is to appeal to yourself from two years ago. This is the person that you're creating stuff for. And the next thing that Dicky Bush speaks about is using this concept to come up with infinite ideas. And for this to work, there are three simple steps. The first is identifying the topic. You basically start broadly and you get more specific. If I'm writing about mobile phones, this is way too specific. If I'm writing about mobile phones for entrepreneurs, it's better. If I'm writing about mobile phones for entrepreneurs that need to have, I don't know, specific apps on their phone and how to best use these apps, 
to get the most out of their busy working day. That is even better. The more dialed in, the better your content will be. And a tip or a bonus about this step one is that you should use the for who so that framework. So I can say I'm writing this content for the busy entrepreneur that needs a smartphone so they can work remotely and still get the job done. So this is the for who. And then there is the so that, so that they can spend more time with their family and I don't know, compartmentalize their work life from their personal life while traveling all over the world. So by creating this content, I'm not only saying who is for, I'm also tying the indirect benefits that my content will provide. Let me see if I can come up with something else just by looking around me. So in front of me, there is this action camera that I'm using to record this video. And let's call the Insta360. I love it. It's a 360 camera, so you can switch on the two lenses and it records videos from the front and the back. And this is super boring, right? I'm just speaking about the features. But if I am writing content for someone that is interested in this camera, I can say, so this Insta360 camera is for the motorcyclist that wants to go on an adventure on their BMW 1200GS, notice the specificity, capture all that adventure without having to think about where they're pointing their camera. They can tie the camera to various points on their motorcycle so they can get all the best shots wherever they go so that they can relive the memories after their trip and these memories will stay with them forever. If you are that kind of motorcycle enthusiast, you know that that piece is exactly meant for you. And if you're in the market to find this type of action camera, you're pretty much sold. So I'm using the for who is the content and so that the benefit that they will get by consuming this content. This is step one. So know your topic for who you're creating it and the benefit that they will get out of consuming that content. The second thing is that you need to establish credibility and I feel this is where most people pull up the handbrake. The way Dickie Bush speaks about this is that there are two types of credibility. And I love the simplicity of this. The first is personal credibility. If you look at the questions that you answered before in terms of your learning experiences, in terms of how you leveled up in your life, in terms of the answers to the questions that you can now give, this is personal experience. If you speak about yourself and what you've done, there is no need for imposter syndrome because you're just saying, this is what I did, this is what worked for me, this is what didn't. So that eliminates imposter syndrome. The problem is when you're trying to speak about something that you haven't done. And that is where the ick factor comes in. So to combat that, you can also use borrowed credibility. So here you're leveraging others' experiences to share what worked for them. So you're saying, okay, I know about motorcycles. I have driven multiple Hondas in my life. I use my Honda Hornet, which is the brand of a motorcycle, almost every single day. So I know a thing or two about how it runs, how it handles its day-to-day -day use. But I've never ridden a Suzuki, so I can't really speak about that. But a friend of mine has been a Suzuki fan all his life. He collects motorcycles, he has three classic bikes, he collects toy models, and what he said about this particular model is that it's ideal for this type of person, but not for this kind. And we can read more about this, etc. So I'm borrowing the credibility of someone else. So I'm speaking about experiences that either I have had or that someone that I know, whether in person or over the internet, has had himself or herself. Things that they have done that make them an expert at what they're saying. And by leveraging personal or borrowed credibility, you eliminate imposter syndrome. The third thing to consider is that you need to take the reader down a path. And according to Dickie Bush, there are five different ways or five different paths that you can take the reader down on with you. And these are the paths. The first is the actionable path. So you're providing a step-by-step -step guide. This is how you do X. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. This is how you book a flight to Asia. You go to this website, you enter your dates, you check the best flight, 
you add the luggage, you pay, you book the flight. You go to the airport, you get on a plane, basically. This is how you get from your country to Asia. Very actionable. Step one, two, three, four, five, etc. That's number one. Number two is analytical. So you're analyzing data or trends. You're saying, okay, in the past three years, the people that went to Asia were 50% more than the two years before that. You're comparing the data, you're analyzing trends, you're showing people that are consuming your content what is happening. This is basically it. You're analyzing, you're taking hard numbers, you're speaking facts, and you're saying this is what happened. And maybe this is what will happen based on this past data. So these are the trends that seem to be happening. Number three is aspirational. So you're motivating someone to do something. Think about Instagram quotes, for example. As cheesy as those are, the aim behind them is to inspire someone to take action. So what can you do in your writing to help someone overcome negative self-beliefs, barriers, obstacles, challenges they feel are in their way to getting from where they're at to where they want to go through your writing, through your content. You're aspiring someone to become a better version of themselves. So you're telling them this specific text can help you do this. And this is my inspirational journey. Or this is this person's inspirational journey. Maybe you can draw some information from it and use it to get yourself to a better place. And this can be used in any niche, basically. Whoever wants to become better, do more things, earn more money, have better relationships. So using aspirational content to guide your readers down that path is a very good thing to do if it makes sense for your business. Number four is anthropological. So you're guiding someone down the exploration of the human mind, down the psyche of the human brain. And you're going deep into why someone does something, why someone doesn't do something, and what people can take from that. It's very detailed. It relies a lot on personal or borrowed credibility. And it gives an insight into something people might not have thought about. They might not see the world in that way. They might not be able to understand someone who has done some type of action. And through your content, you're giving them the inside look at this person's brain. So those are the four different paths that you can take people down on. It's important that as you create more content, you are consistent with your choice of paths. You can mix and match an actionable type of path with an aspirational one. All the paths tie in together. At the same time, being consistent and known for a specific type of writing, a specific type of content creation is important for your long-term brand. So think about the type of content you want to create and the path you want to guide someone down on. And this is it. That is how you answer the question of what content can I create? You're using your own experiences, your own learnings. You're no longer facing imposter syndrome because you're using borrowed or personal credibility, and you're really providing value by guiding someone down a path, whether it's through an actionable path, a look into someone's psyche, a look into trends and data, and the possible combination of all those four methods as a way to provide value. I hope you found that useful. I know I did myself, so I just wanted to share that. If you want to get started on your freelance journey, First of all, check out the link to the keys stuff in the description and also check out the free checklist that will help you get started as a freelancer. It will give you the step-by-step -step actions you need to take to turn your dream into a reality. I'll speak to you soon.